I'd like to tell you a little story um, that helped me understand a particular idea in John chapter 21. The occasion is after the death of Christ and his promise to rendezvous with his disciples up in the Galilee, and seven of his disciples who had decided to go fishing together, led by the apostle Peter. Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, uh, the two sons of Zebedee, and then two unnamed disciples, and uh, one suggested it was so you and I could identify with them in the boat. They went out fishing, fished all night, as they do in the Galilee, because it's so hot during the day, the fish go deep into the water. And so here, during the evening, they fish into the night hours so that as the fish come up to feed, uh, they're able to catch them. But they were unsuccessful. And in the morning, as they drew near to the shore, they saw a man standing on the seashore, didn't know it was Jesus, but he called out across the waves, did you catch anything? They say you should never ask a uh, fisherman th that question, because if he has caught something, he'll tell you. If he hasn't caught it, then he's better not having to ask the question, but they responded simply, no. And so the Lord Jesus said, well, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. And they did, and their nets were full and they could barely pull them into shore. So the question I've always had is, why the right side of the boat? Well, quite some years ago, I was staying with a friend up in Manitoba, Selkirk, Manitoba, northern Winnipeg. And he's a commercial fisherman in, in Lake Winnipeg. Lake Winnipeg is about 250 miles from north to south, much bigger than the Sea of Galilee. And it's the, I think, the 11th largest freshwater lake in the world. And, uh, these uh, brave commercial fishermen go out there in the winter when the ice is so thick you can drive a truck on it, and they auger down through the ice, and somehow they manage to send a cord through the water and then tie that to a net and set the nets under the ice. And uh, they can set maybe as many as 60 nets that way, and then they pull up the nets uh, once a week. And it's a very vigorous life because it could be 40 below zero or colder, and uh, there's nothing to stop the wind all the way from the Arctic Circle coming down that massive lake. So we were working in the garage. He was getting his nets ready. And I asked him that question. I know it was the right side as opposed to the wrong side, because that's where they caught the fish. But why the right side as opposed to the left side? And he said, well, now you see on the net here, on one edge of the net, we have floats. And on the other edge, we have weights, and that's what holds the net. And this is how they would do it. They would set out the net, and uh, then the two little boats would bring the ends of the net around, and they would trap the fish. And then they would pull the net in and catch the fish in this ever-shrinking circle of the net. Well, he said, you know, when you're doing that, of course, the boat is going in the direction from your back, that direction, and you're standing looking at the back of the boat and you're working with your net. And uh, in the middle of the boat at the back, there'll be something, a motor or a tiller. And so you can't throw it out the middle of the boat. You throw it out of one side or the other. And the general tendency is to use your strong right arm. You would be throwing it out of the left side at the back of the boat. And when Jesus suggested that they would find fish if they threw it out of the right side, he was calling on them to use their weak arm to throw the net, to throw these weights out as they set their net in the lake. This was a tremendous insight to me that if we're going to catch fish, if we're going to be involved in this great work of evangelism, and that was the promise of the Lord Jesus right from the beginning, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. The secret of being successful in fishing is to follow Christ. And the closer we follow him, the more we will attract people not to us, but to him. But if we're going to be effective in this fishing business, we're going to have to, as it were, 
use the weak side. Remember, Paul learned that lesson when the Lord explained to him that I'm not going to take away this thorn, but I am going to have my strength made perfect in your weakness. And Paul said, I've learned to boast then in my weakness, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. So when we look to ourselves, look, I'm a fisherman. I've got some experience. I grew up on this lake. I know the habits of the fish. I know the best places to fish. I know the best time to fish. I know the best techniques to use. All of it came to nothing. But at the command of Christ and in their willingness to respond in obedience, as it were, to the weak side, it was then that they caught the fish. May the Lord help us to remember this principle, that in our service for the Lord, he's going to play to our weak side. Not where we think we're strong, because where we're strong in ourselves, that's where we're weak in spiritual things. But where we know we're weak, we have to look to him. And in dependence on him, the Lord is able to fill our nets. What about 153 fish? All kinds of theories abound about the meaning of that number. But it's quite obvious that with seven men in the boat, it doesn't divide evenly into 153. And when you're serving the Lord, things are rarely going to come out even. Some of the team may get more glory than others, more attention than others. Some may get more prayer than others. Some may seem to be more effective in bringing souls to Christ. Some may be better sowing the seed and some reaping the seed and some watering the plants that grow. But in the end, it's the Lord who brings the increase and therefore he's the one who gets the glory. And so we need to be happy. You'll notice they didn't count the fish until the morning. As someone has said, the statistics are not for the end of the expedition. They're for the end of the age. And we may say so many professed salvation. We don't know how many may be truly saved until the morning comes. But in any case, a great little story to remind us. They were surprised at how many the net could hold. And I think when we get to heaven, we'll be surprised at how many nets full the Lord has brought to the shore through the weakness of his own people as they in simple obedience have responded to the voice of that blessed man standing on the other shore.